And Chinese Premier Li Qiang urging nations to rise above their differences in order to help developing countries tackle poverty and climate change. Li Qiang is in Paris attending the summit for a new global financial pact. It is Mr. Li's first European trip since he became Premier in March, and it's aimed at managing China's relations with Europe. The summit focuses on easing the debt burden of, on some of the world's most vulnerable countries and to find ways to allot new funds for financing their climate goals. During the summit, South African nation Zambia struck a deal to restructure $6.3 billion worth of its debt. China is the country's largest official creditor, and the deal, will it would serve as a precedent for a growing list of countries that are struggling to repay their debts. I think it's clear from the summit we do... I think it's clear from the summit we do have consensus. We share the goal of securing a more prosperous, healthy, and livable planet. And it's also clear that there's political will and commitment to multilateralism to translate intentions into actions. Indeed, I'm pleased to share this stage with colleagues from around the world, including Premier Li Cheng. As I said in a speech earlier in the year, as the world's two largest economies, we have a responsibility to work together on global issues. It's something we can do and something the world expects of us. Ross Cullen joins us live from Paris for more on this story. Ross, China is clearly playing a crucial role there at the Paris summit. And now we've got this Zambia agreement as well. It signals that China has its intention, at least, to cooperate <coughs> with other nations uh, to address the issues in global climate financing. How is this going to play into Beijing's relations with Europe, though, going forward? Well, Beijing and Europe certainly do have a good relationship when it comes to climate change reduction policies, uh, trying to work together to protect biodiversity, so the preservation of uh, forests and those green initiatives. It is on environmental policies where we do find uh, quite a lot of alignment between Beijing and Brussels, Beijing and Paris, Beijing uh, and Berlin. Uh, so. In terms of that, Li Chiang's visit here, the Chinese Premier visit here, are certainly worth uh, continuing those bilateral relations, the bilateral partnership, the discussions between uh, Paris and Beijing. But also they're able to work together when it comes to green initiatives. There is certainly uh, a feeling uh, in China and also in the European Union that this is one area that you can almost guarantee that there could well be alignment. There should be easy access to common ground between both sides when it comes to green initiatives or if it's a green bonds or improving investment into funds that are trying to focus on protecting species from going ex extinct uh, for example so in terms of the relationship just on that point dawn in terms of the green policy relationship between uh, beijing and brussels then that is on firmer ground than of course some of the other issues that do remain between the two sides ross when it comes to pledges for climate finance I mean, let's look at that, because the wealthy nations have only finalized about $100 billion worth of that. There's a lot of criticism uh, of Western nations, you know, I mean, suggestions they're falling short on, on crisis financing as it stands. How is this going to affect future climate negotiations? Well, I'm just looking down because 20 minutes ago, Oxfam released uh, their reaction to how they thought this summit for a new global financial pact here in Paris went. Uh, makes pretty damning reading, Dawn. I'm just going to read out a couple of parts of the... Um the communique, the press statement that Oxfam uh, put out, uh, saying that they are denouncing the lack of political will from rich countries to redistribute their wealth and their power in favour of the poorest 
nations on the planet. And they have said that, quote, I deplore this summit has, that this summit has failed to bring about a response at the highest level for the colossal needs of countries in the global south to face up to climate change and also to provide their people with essential services such as health. Uh, that's quotation from Cécile Duflo, who's the Director General of Oxfam France. So there's some reaction straight away this lunchtime after the conclusion of the uh, Paris Climate Finance Summit, just from one of the uh, criticisms from one of the green activist groups. We do see a lot of support from uh, Oxfam for work in different countries in the global south, different countries that are part of the emerging economies group. That is what Emmanuel Macron and the Western uh, partners here at this summit wanted to be able to bring about demonstrations of a changing model, demonstrations of a changing mindset when it comes to uh, focusing on new financing initiatives to support the fight against biodiversity at the same time as supporting the fight to reduce poverty, increase access to education, increase access to healthy sanitation and also increase uh, the attempts to bring about more renewable energy transitions. Thank you for that update, Ross, and the strong reaction from Oxfam there. Ross Cullen, thank you. Joining us there from Paris.